I have so many questions to ask you. I'm really inspired by what you've done in being an entrepreneur and writing. I'm inspired by how you help other people turn their memories into memoirs. I think that's fascinating. Uh, one of the things I want to really talk to you, though, is um, the difference in the dichotomy between legacy and literacy. We have a massive issue in America right now I'm super concerned about where only 40% of our current youth are considered literate and literate being where they're functional in society, where they can reach their potential, where they're even able to to get a job that re- requires any level of reading. Um, that's really concerning. So when you, when you look at the numbers, there was a study that came out that less than 75% of Americans can read past um, um, sorry, 75% of Americans read below a sixth grade level. And so when it, yeah. I love that, that you are helping people write books and I want to talk about that. But one of the things that concerns me is when we think about what led to things like the civil rights movement or the freedom for slaves in America, what has led to freedom for an independence and democracy for countries around the world, so much of it ties to literacy. And I know that reading and literacy has been such an important part of your background. I wanted to just get some of your thoughts on the decline of literacy in America. Well, it's, I think we could have multiple episodes on this topic, so I'll, I'll try to do what I can in the time that we have. It's a, um, it's a, it's a big issue, and actually, some of my ghostwriting clients, we, we have one of the issues that um, some of them have worked on is improving literacy rates in the United States. It's multifaceted. Some of it is, you know, it has to do with the K through twelve system. It has to do with what's happening at home. There's a lot of issues. Um, so what, what, you know, here I am, I'm trying to get people to write and it's hard enough when people are having a hard time reading. Um, what I would say is that a lot of this happens, you know, it starts at home. If you can get people at home reading with their family, with somebody that they trust or that they love, it almost doesn't even matter what, um, you'll get a spark, you get this feeling of ownership, and that can lead you to so many different things in life. Um, but you're right, this is just such a huge issue. I mean, I don't even know where to begin with it. But once you do have the ability to read, once wherever your level is, and when you can increase your level to something more advanced, the world opens up to you. And I think that's something that gets lost with, I just don't know if people are talking about it, that when you can read and you can comprehend, your your brain is doing things, your brain is getting stronger, and you, you're better equipped to deal with what's going on in the world around you. Yeah, that's right. There's a great freedom in literacy. It's something I think that was really lost during COVID. I know that you, you your generation when you were in high school is really shut down because of the lockdowns and COVID and, and kids were just really lost. It seemed like two years of just like a literacy setback as they uh, didn't have those prompts at school and weren't forced to do reading at home. How did you get into being such a avid reader and writer, where did this passion of yours come from? Oh, I think if I had done anything other than working with books, it would have been strange. I grew up in a house full of books. <laughs> My father uh, is a nonfiction author. He's working on book number 11 right now. And growing up, he was a journalist and he was a book editor. So every day felt like Christmas because we would be getting review books. They would be coming in and they were books that were coming out on children's books, cookbooks, adult books, everything. We had access to it all. So it was a free-for-all. And there were really very few constraints on what we were picking up out of the boxes. If my dad was not reviewing it, we could take it. And so that's really where it started. And there were just books everywhere. And um, you can't really see behind me, but um, in the rest of the house, I've continued the tradition. There's books in the bathroom, there's books in the kitchen. They're just, they're everywhere. So you really can't go someplace without picking one up. So that's really where it started. And I've continued with it. Um, so uh, I read forever. I've been writing forever. And I've been really, um, I guess, blessed because my daughter has also picked up this this bug. And I, I will say during COVID, unfortunately, the schools did shut down, but she was okay because she just got to go and sit and read her books in her room. And I, I ran out of books to give her, so uh, which I, I feel very fortunate to be able to say I was in that position. Uh, one thing I want to say is that you, you cited that study about kids um, during COVID who lost their, um, their reading levels. I did see another study recently that also found that kids were able to bounce back, but it also depended on the kind of system that they were in, if the, the school systems that they were in were also prepared to help them bounce back. So Kids are, are flexible. If you can give them the resources and, and the scaffolding that they need, they can rise to the occasion. That's interesting, Barbara. What school systems were more helpful for kids bouncing back with literacy? 
um, schools that had robust English programs that had early intervention programs, mm -hmm. um, you know, things that you would expect. Oh, that's super interesting. So let's talk a little bit about what it's like being a woman who's an entrepreneur and business owner. So you've been in your, in your own business writing, you know, for 20 years, you've launched DIYbook.us, where you not only help with ghostwriting, but you help people with really easy process for being able to prompt people in the writing process. I really believe anybody can write a book. It's actually the discipline that's hard. It's almost like a weight loss program. Anyone can lose weight. It's just, it's micro decisions over time, right? And writing mm -hmm. a book is really similar. But if you don't have a coach, you don't have someone in the gym helping you, you don't have a weight loss program. And, and you're kind of like that. You're like a, uh, a boot camp instructor or a, a gym instructor. You're your gym trainer for book writing, which is amazing, <laughs> but it must have been really hard saying, you know, this is a, an idea that I have. Um, no one else really doing that, you know, helping someone with that concept with an online, um, an online process for helping somebody write a book. I'd love for you to talk to the audience because there might be other um, budding entrepreneurs listening in, people who want to write a story or they have an idea, they don't know where to start. How did you, how did you decide I'm going to start a business and I'm going to persevere in this? What are some of those challenges you've had to overcome? Um, well, I have to, I guess, back up a little bit before I launched my ghostwriting company, I actually used to be a teacher. So I guess deep down in my heart, I always want to help people, whether they're learning you know, French lit in that case, or if they're writing a book, I, I want to help. So my ghostwriting company, um, with ghostwriting, it's an intense, you know, uh, relationship. It's, I, I call it like a nine month marriage. <laughs> um, but it's also, it can be an expensive undertaking for a lot mm -hmm. of people. And what I found for every uh, client that would work with me with ghostwriting, I would probably turn away a dozen mm. who, who had wonderful stories, had great things to say, but they couldn't, they couldn't uh, afford working with me. And that, um, that really made me sad. So I said, well, how can I help people actually write their stories in a way that's affordable and in a way where they're not going to get scammed? Because uh, unfortunately, in, in the ghostwriting world, if you go online, you can type in ghostwriting services and you'll see people who will write a whole book for you for you know, 500 bucks. And they also, by the way, they wrote like The Cat in the Hat and Little House on the Prairie. And by the way, all of these companies, they all wrote the exact same book. So they wouldn't be out there if they people weren't using those services. So that really got me upset too, that people were getting taken advantage by these other companies. So I said, well, how can I do that? And, and I had to basically disassemble the ghostwriting and writing process, but also make it accessible for people um, who may be intimidated by writing for various reasons. You know, maybe their English teacher in high school was not very nice to them or not very caring. Um, or they just, you know, people uh, feel intimidated just in general. You see people who've written, you know, hundreds of pages uh, for a book and you say, how am I going to do that? And so we just really stripped it away and made it a process where people can go at their own pace. I provide a pacing. So I guess kind of like a coach in a gym, I'm encouraging um, the writer to go uh, once a week, we send out email prompts based on a series of uh, genres that the customer picks out uh, when they sign up. Uh, but they don't have to follow them because the beauty about writing like, a life story is that it's personal to yourself. So if you want to write about your your military history, if you want to write about your, your faith journey, if you want to just write about your family or adversity, any of those things, you can choose those and you can write them when you want, when you feel like you can. And the nice thing about the prompts um, that we give is they're based on my experience with ghostwriting clients who have covered all these different topics anyway. So I try to be as hands-on as possible without me actually being there helping them. And that's been really rewarding um, to hear people say, I've been wanting to write this book, kind of like you said earlier, um, but I've been intimidated by it. Or I've been, uh, I've heard the term analysis paralysis. I've just overthought it. Um, and then when they get in there, they're not necessarily following the prompts. They're going and they're doing their own thing, which I think is just very beautiful.